Uh, <clears throat> okay. All right, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 16. We'll save all the other talk for the afternoon service. We'll be doing hymns. We'll have some hymns, some testimonies, and some prayer, or whatever the Lord, Lord uh, leads in, in that uh, afternoon service there. That's what we'll do. So be ready with some hymns, brother, Brother Andrew, and we'll get some of those together and, and uh, have a time of singing and, and uh, thanking the Lord for all His goodness and giving testimony of, of uh, everything that He's done for us. Amen. Give some testimonies. Some of you men may have some testimonies you want to give from what happened uh, yesterday out preaching and everything. And, and uh, Anthony's excited about the drummers. Um, oh. oh my, wait till you see the video. <clears throat> anyway, um, <clears throat> hey, give me some more of that, Brother Paul. Give me some more of that cayenne pepper there. That, that helps. Is this cinnamon? I'm just checking. I don't want to. I know, I know. Yeah, I know. This just reminds me of something else. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this does. See, a real man can do that, okay? I'm just letting you know that name. All right? Huh? It's cayenne pepper, everybody. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Make sure you edit this out. Uh, yes, sir. I would, I would omit the omission there that said to omit it. I would omit that. That's not a good idea. <clears throat> All right, Romans chapter 16. Uh, well, <clears throat> I, honestly, I don't like doing this as much as it seems like I probably do. <laughs> I really don't. Um, but <clears throat> there comes a time when you got to deal with some things, though, that are out there. And we have a responsibility as long as we have a voice to use it. And, uh, and there are people that are trapped in air. And uh, they're they're trapped in, uh, you know, in in uh, a lot of things that false doctrine and things like that that are that are damnable heresies, and these are these are damnable heresies that we're going to talk about today, really. And this is by no means an exhaustive an exhaustive list or anything or or in depth. You can go back and listen to many of our sermons that we've preached on topics like repentance, a salvation that changes people, and all of those things. If you really want to get into deep, deep details in a lot of those, and, and I mean, you know, <laughs> you can see those and, and, and you can understand them. Uh, you can dig deep and, 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 and listen and learn some things if you're not ready for that. But this, this message is going to deal with the doctrinal heresies and the, the false doctrine, basically, of, of Stephen Anderson. And uh, he has an audience of thousands, I mean, millions, really. I mean, if you look at his Facebook page uh, or his uh, YouTube videos and everything, they, they, it reaches a lot of, a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> just, to, just to let you know, I, I didn't actually start a war with Stephen Anderson. He started it with me. Um, he, he posted... About two, two or three, about three years ago, I think it was, he put me on his repentance blacklist and labeled me a work salvation heretic, basically, and because I believe in the biblical doctrine of repentance. So he put me on his list and, and uh, marked me. So um, I'm going to mark him today, not because he marked me, um, but because he's a dangerous heretic. And I make no bones about it. I do not believe the man is saved, okay? I want you to understand that. Because he doesn't understand what biblical salvation is. He doesn't get it. And I'm going to show you what he doesn't get and why. And these, these heresies, 
are prevalent today all over the place. They are in fundamental Baptist churches. They are everywhere. So, so it's not just to do that. And by the way, I already know what this is going to do. This is going to cause a, a storm is what it's going to do. It's, it's going to heat up a war. Um, and I'll have those guys coming after me. But I, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I'm not going to respond to them, okay? Um, if you all want to respond to them, feel free. I'm going to stay out of it, and I'm just going to do what God's called me to do, and that's to preach, okay? I'll let everybody else, if they want to do that, they can, they can deal with that. <clears throat> um, I make no bones about it. I believe he's a heretic. I believe he's a dangerous, damnable heretic. Um, I, I do not believe he understands what biblical salvation is, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, you, his videos are out there. I can't stand his annoying voice to listen to him very long. Um, really, it just, it just, I, I can't. I, I'm just, uh, it's not. I, I can't take it because I know what he's doing. Um, I know who his friends are. Um, anyway, so. So, Romans chapter 16, verse number 17. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. That's really what's went on. <clears throat> this man became popular by being tased, uh, being tased uh, for uh, standing up to, was it Border Patrol or something? Um, and he became popular when, when they lit him up for it. And, um, <clears throat> and he screamed. At, I mean, I would scream too probably if you shocked me. Maybe a little bit deeper one, not such a high-pitched one, but maybe a little, uh, maybe a little grunt like, oh, uh, like that maybe, but not, not like a high-pitched girly squeal. But um, it would have been a little bit different. But anyway, um, <laughs> I hope anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on tape squealing like a girl, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just really wouldn't want to be. I know, I know what this is going to bring, but it's okay. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, all right, I, I think these folks are attracted to him. There are a lot of people that are attracted to him because he, he preaches very straightforward. A lot of the things he says is very straightforward. He bucks the trend of political correctness, um, you know, uh, he bucks the trend of, of you know, kind of being silent. And people are attracted to that. They like that. They like a man that will stand up and be kind of a rugged individual and will say some things that need to be said and things like that. The problem is, is that he mixes uh, some truth with a whole lot of error, okay? And um, <clears throat> anyway, um, and he's very crafty and tricky by how he does it. Um, Brother David Ickes and I got into a, an argument with, with him on Facebook, Stephen Anderson on Facebook, and he blocked us. Um, <laughs> and I understand why. Okay. <clears throat> but um, nevertheless, his friends are very dangerous too. He has friends like Alex Jones, who I think are, are Jesuit. Uh, they're, they're definitely... Um, they're definitely um, undercover, uh, working for the Jesuit New World Order, I believe, um, whatever you want to call them, um, agents, so to speak. I'm not saying Alex Jones is a Jesuit priest. I'm not stupid. I understand he's not a Jesuit priest, but I do understand they have their agents. And his job is to be a gatekeeper, and Alex Jones is a gatekeeper. And I believe Anderson is a gatekeeper, too. And I believe that's that. I, I believe they're working together to do that. And uh, I would not sell my videos. I don't sell anything. I give it away. But um, I would not sell anything uh, with Alex Jones. I would not partner with Alex Jones. Okay. Uh, I had a discuss a, a short discussion with Alex Jones one time on a radio show. Uh, behind the scenes, he said a few words to me. Said a few words to him. He listened to a broadcast that I did on the 501c3. Mentioned a few things. Uh, and that was it. That was the end of it. But I, I don't want anything to do with Alex Jones because he's a phony and a fraud. Okay? He's a liar, too, by the way, and that's proven. <clears throat> but uh, he's a fake, and um, he's a new ager. He doesn't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ saves. And I don't know why anybody would want to partner up with him. Um, but I do know because Anderson is what I would call a media whore. Okay? He says things to get the attraction of the media so he can be in front of them like a little girl doing glamour shots. Okay, he wants to be popular. He wants everybody to know who he is. Um, 
And uh, everybody knows who he is. Well, most people don't know who he really is. They just think they do. But uh, when you look at his doctrine, you can tell who he really is. Anyway, the Bible says to mark them. Um, one, of the, one of the things that he does is he attracts a lot of crazy people. Anderson does. There's a lot of crazy people. I'm going to get into doctrine here. Just hang on a second. I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of laying the foundation here so you understand what I'm doing. And then I'm going to get into a lot of deep doctrine here. And, and Yeah, I do attract some crazy people, yeah. But, I don't, I, but they hate me. They don't like me, the crazy people. They just, you know, they like him. They hate me. But uh, um, anyway, uh, but he attracts them, and they're, they're like savage witches or something. They're crazy. They're insane people, and they say a lot of crazy things. But anyway, <laughs> um, but Anderson never reproves these people, but encourages this worship. He, he, he never never reproves it, never deals with it, but just kind of encourages it. Anyway, um, but <clears throat> anyway, so number one, Anderson teaches repentance is just unbelief to believe. That's the first thing that he teaches. Uh, he teaches that that repentance is nothing more than you turning from unbelief to belief, that it has nothing to do with sin. Now, Anderson learned this from Hiles Anderson College, okay? He learned it there because Curtis Hudson taught it, Jack Hiles taught it. Uh, Jack Hiles and Curtis Hudson, if you don't know, systematically changed the definition of the word repentance, okay? Historically, biblically, historically, repentance never, never was turning from unbelief to belief. It never was that. Those men changed the definition of that word, and they systematically taught thousands of preachers to change the definition of that word to mean something other than what the Scriptures, and historically it meant. What does that produce? Well, it produces a bunch of antinomian, lawless, false-professing people. It, produces, it also produces a Carl Hatch-type salesman soul winning squeeze that basically you just grab their hand and you just repeat a prayer and then they're saved. And, uh, I've had people say, well, they didn't want to be saved, but they got saved. Wait a minute. How's that work? Okay. <clears throat> but that's, that's where he learned. Now I've preached exhaustively on the subject of repentance. You can see sermons, biblical repentance versus one, two, three, repeat after me. Um, and, uh, the Bible says repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. This man teaches what? He, this man teaches that repentance, if you say it's turning from sin, or if you say it's, uh, if you say it's um, uh, turning, uh, turning uh, from sin, or it's, a, it's sorrow in the heart, and it's a change of mind that leads to a change of action with sorrow in the heart that has fruit, then he says that basically you're preaching works salvation. I heard this man say, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this again, but I, I, I heard him say this in a video, and, I, and, I, and I, I interacted with him online when he said this. He goes, well, you don't understand. I mean, some drunks just stay drunks. They don't ever come out of that. They just live drunks. So they're just saved drunks their whole life, and they're just... But the Bible says the drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Doesn't it say that? Isn't that what the Scripture said? Well, then I don't understand that. I mean... Doesn't make any sense, does it? What did Jesus say? He said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's what he said. The Bible says that Jesus came to save his people in their sins? No, from their sins. He didn't come to save them in them, he came to save them from them. He says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse number 8. This man doesn't understand the doctrine of repentance at all because he's never repented. He's still a lost, hell-bound sinner. That won't be very popular with all the religious types because he holds a King James Bible up and he does a video about King James. And, and, now, and people are going to accept that as, well, this man must be saved because, I mean, why would he use the King James Bible? <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 8. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive, I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice not that you're made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. 
For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. What is repentance? The change of mind that leads to a change of action with sorrow in the heart for sinning against a righteous, holy God. You're trying to tell me that you get saved and you don't have any sorrow for your sin. You don't even realize, you're, you don't even realize the wickedness and the depths of your sin. You're trying to tell me that's what it is. And, and, and all it is is just this, this change of mind. This, oh, I changed my mind, but nothing else follows it. There's no fruit of it. There's no fruit of repentance at all. That's not in the gospel. That's not in the Bible at all. It's not scriptural. The Bible says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of, this world, of the world worketh death. For behold, this selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort. What is godly sorrow? What is godly? Repentance, godly sorrow repent, uh, accompanies repentance. Change of heart, you could say, or change of mind that leads to a change of action. Sin is what puts you in hell, not unbelief. Unbelief is sin. Understand that? Unbelief is sin. Did you know there wasn't an unbelief offering in the Old Testament? Did you know that? Why, preacher? Why wasn't there an un I thought, I thought un well, unbelief. I, I had a lady tell me this. I had a Pentecostal lady that um, about a week ago or two weeks ago, we were out on the streets in Minneapolis. And she said, well, well it's, it's unbelief that puts you in hell. Not all those sins. Those sins don't put you in hell. I didn't see the unbelief offering in the Old Testament. I did see a sin offering, though. I did see a trespass offering, though, didn't I? I didn't see the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of unbelief. No, of sins. Amen. Man, this ain't unbelief. I'm, I'm yelling and I'm scaring the kid. <clears throat> Again, I've preached exhaustively on repentance. This is not the point of the sermon, just a portion of it. To prove the reason why Anderson is so wrong about sodomites and his view of them. The reason why he is so wrong about them is one of the reasons why is because he doesn't believe in biblical repentance. Okay? So if I didn't believe that a man needed to repent of his sins or turn from his sin and turn to the Savior, if I didn't believe that, then I wouldn't believe it was possible for a sodomite to be saved. See how that works? I couldn't possibly believe that. Why? Because I, don't, because I don't believe that they have to turn from any. I don't believe sin has anything to do with it. So that's why he believes that the drunkards stay drunkards, because he doesn't believe in the power of salvation. He doesn't believe in what repentance is. By the way, repentance is a gift of God. How about that? Amen. His view of repentance is just turning from unbelief to belief. He believes that drunkards stay drunkards and may never change. He believes that all men may not change. The gospel could change some, but not everyone. Is only after salvation. Yeah, that's exactly them. They believe that it's after after you get saved that godly sorrow worketh repentance. I've never met a man that claimed to be saved that wasn't broken the day that he came to Christ and knew he was a lost, hell-bound sinner. But you you see with these people the the way they push their one two three repeat after me. You ever seen them? It's like a salesman. Should they knock on the door and they have this they have this salesman skit that they do uh, that he has this video that all these people watch and they knock on the doors and they have this salesman skit they do where they where they sell people on how to be saved and they just run them through a perfect little script. It's a script. It's called the Romans Road. It's a perfect little script. <clears throat> That's right. Amen. But see, if you don't understand what, what it means to be saved from the power of sin, from the penalty of sin, and one day from the presence of sin, if you don't understand that, go back and, and, and listen to the, that, ser that series that we did on, on salvation. And, and you can, I, I don't have time to go through all that. Okay. Repentance is granted by the Holy Ghost, so the Bible says. Acts chapter 11, verse number 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. What does granted mean? It means given. It's a gift. What's salvation? It's the gift of God. 
Faith and repentance are both gifts of God. We are saved by the faith of Christ. As the Bible says, go look at that term, faith of Christ. Study that out sometime. You'll see what that means. Yeah, repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of action, again, with sorrow in the heart. But perhaps the reason Anderson damns all sodomites to be reprobates is because he does not believe in biblical repentance. If I didn't believe in the power of repentance, if I didn't believe in that power, if I didn't believe in the power of God to do that, then I, I would, yeah, I would believe that's just the grossest sin in the world and nobody could be saved from it. By the way, listen to me very closely. I don't believe, I've said this to you many times. I don't believe in a gospel that doesn't change someone. But that's what Anderson preaches, is a gospel that doesn't change someone. That's exactly what he preaches. That's why you can't imagine Christ saving sodomites or changing the drunks. However, he overlooks some of these verses in his false interpretation. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. By the way, that covers sodomites there. That, that list does. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Such were some of you. But ye were washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Yes, unless a man comes in repentance and faith in Christ and is saved by the faith of Christ, and he will die in his sins, be it sodomy or any other sins, he will die in those sins. And that's why he dies for sin. Of course, the gospel is by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, the Bible says, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Of course, but the Bible also goes on to say, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That is a gospel that changes people. It's not a gospel that keeps you dead in trespasses and sins and all your lifetime subject to bondage. Amen. By the way, number two, he doesn't understand regeneration. doesn't know what it means. doesn't get it. Titus chapter 3, verse number 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in regeneration, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead and you're made alive. The sodomite that repents of his sins and trusts in the shed blood of Jesus Christ for his salvation gets what? He gets made new. He gets brought alive. He gets quickened from the dead. He gets made alive in Christ. I didn't see the sin of sodomy excluded in that. But when you don't understand regeneration, perhaps it's because most of the time people don't understand regeneration it's because they never experienced it. Also, some people live in, a, in, in, in church their whole life, in fundamentalism their whole life, and they, they've never been around wicked sinners. Like, when they hear testimonies like Nate's testimony of seeing devils and all kinds of crazy stuff going on, all that, I mean, man, they look at him and think, man, that guy is a weirdo. I mean, or they look at, or they look at sodomites that get saved. They, no, that guy can't be saved. They can't. They see. They can't imagine it. Why? Because they've been sheltered from it, and they've never experienced or been around those type of people before. But when you've been around the down and out, the dirty, the druggard, the tramp, the whore, the prostitute, the devils, when you've been around it, and you see God take a man that is dead and make him alive, you believe in the power of God. You believe in the power of God. Not some stinking one, two, three, repeat after me, poem that somebody teaches you, but the power of God to save sinners. Amen. Tired of that garbage. I've been hearing it. I've been hearing it ever since I've been saved. This, this little poem to have somebody repeat, it isn't the power of God and the salvation, though. And that's why you don't see a change in somebody's life because you've never been around them dirty, rotten, old, wicked, nasty, filthy sinners that, that, that have been stuck in their sin and wickedness with needles in their arms and AIDS and all kinds of diseases. But God saves them and makes them new by the power of God. 
but you've never experienced the power of God, you little runt, and that's why you don't believe in it. I don't care who gets mad at me. Good, get mad, get glad, get whatever you want. I'm going to keep preaching it. <clears throat> I, believe, I believe in a gospel that changes somebody. I've seen people come. I've seen people made alive from the dead. I've seen it. I've seen God regenerate a man. I've seen him make him a new creature. I've seen him save him from the devil's clutches. I've watched it happen. I've, se- I've lived it. I am that guy. You rotten little heathen. I am that guy who he saved out of the gutter and made a new creature. And you rotten little devil, you ain't taking it away either. It's the power of God, and I'm tired of it. I knew I was going to get fired up today because I'm so sick and tired of little panty waists like that saying things like that because they're too cowardly to go out and preach the gospel to those wicked old hell-bound sinners that are out there that are stuck in their sin, stuck in their harlotry. He doesn't believe in a gospel that changes someone. Will you tell me when I get testimonies from these people that have been changed when they were sodomites, man, and they, and they, send, and they send me emails. They say, you know what? I got saved out of that. God saved my life out of that wicked mess, and I've never looked back. You know, there's a lady on my, <clears throat> that, that follows this ministry, and, and uh, this lady, <clears throat> she's been married now for 10 years. Five and a half years ago, she got saved. She was a, a, uh, a stripper. She was a lesbian. She was one of those wicked down and outers that everybody gives up on that doesn't think can be saved. Five and a half years ago, she got saved by the grace of God. She's never had one lesbian thought again. She's never had a desire to be that way. She's been made new in Christ. Now you go ahead and look at that lady, you rotten little devil, and tell her she can't be saved! It's because you don't believe in the power of God because you're a lost little heathen, that's why. Because anybody that understands the power of God knows the power of God to regenerate. And you know what? I, I hope, I hope, oh man, I'm, t- I'm going to keep going here. <clears throat> I'm going to have to because I'm going to lose my voice if I don't keep going. All right. <laughs> you at the quickened, he said. You at the made alive. You know, don't ask me to believe in a gospel that doesn't change someone. Don't ask me to go out to the streets and preach to people. Don't ask me to go witness to people. Even if you want to go knock on doors, I don't care what it is you want to do. Even if you want to go do that, don't ask me to go there and be selective and say, well, I'm sorry, sir, but you're a sodomite and you can't be saved. God didn't die for you. Christ didn't shed his blood for you. It doesn't have power to save you out of your sins. It's only a select few sins. You blasphemous little devil. You don't believe in the power of God. And you bet I'm calling them out. I've been waiting a long time to do it too, and I've held back for years on this. <clears throat> this joker calls himself a preacher and whittles his salvation down to a prayer that's just a one, two, three, repeat after me. Well, you know what, friend? You're right. That won't save a sodomite out of his sins. You're right. And that's why you can't see the power of God changing them and making them new creatures. That's why, because that little poem you're teaching people isn't salvation. See, you sound mad. You better believe I am. I am angry. Let me ask you a question. Son of man, shall these bones live? Huh? Huh? Son of man, shall these bones live? How do they live? Because the four winds of the gospel come in and breathe on them and give them life. It's called life from the dead. You should look into it, Anderson. You should look into regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. You haven't experienced it yet because you preach something contrary to it, which means you've never experienced it. And you can't possibly understand it because these things are spiritually discerned. And I fully and, and I'm fully aware that your little devils are gonna come after me. <clears throat> but my God is greater than your devils. <clears throat> and let me go on public record for him. Yes, again, let me say this. I don't think he's saved, and I believe he's a plant. And I don't care who doesn't like it. I don't care. If you, if you want to stop listening to this ministry, you that are online because you don't like what I'm saying, feel free. doesn't matter. I'm going to keep saying it. 
and I'm going to keep warning people over and over again because he is preaching a gospel that does not change people. And he's doing it for a reason. Next, Anderson believes all sodomites are reprobates, but as seen in the previous study that we did on Romans chapter 1 and everything else, we know that that's not true, that reprobates, we just, we just went over that, reprobates are listed in the Scriptures. What are they? In Romans chapter 1. We, we, we looked at that. Yes, sodomy is mentioned there. Yes, some sodomites are reprobates, but reprobate concerning the faith is all the way through dealing with people in churches. You, I mean, I don't know if you understand this, but the Bible was written to the saved. You get that, right? So when you understand the Bible's written to save when Paul's talking to people and he's saying, no, you're not, lest you be reprobate, he's talking to churches in those epistles. He's talking to churches, okay? He's talking to people that are in the pews, in the seats that are there, that are part of those assemblies. That's who he's preaching to. That's who he's warning of reprobation. That's the warning that's given. That's the warning. Some sodomites? Absolutely. All? No way. <clears throat> By the way, there's another, another man uh, that's a sodomite. That, or not, excuse me, he was saved out of being a sodomite. Uh, he was a homosexual and he got saved. I don't know how many years ago it was, but the Lord saved him out of that and changed his life and made him a new creature. He's trying to figure out how some guy can tell him that he can't be saved. How could some preacher tell him that he can't be saved? What kind of gospel is that to walk up to somebody and tell them, well, because of, because of your sins, you can never be saved? Isn't that the, well, oh, wait a minute. That's because you don't believe the gospel is salvation from sins. So that's why you come to that conclusion, because you don't believe that. <clears throat> now I want to read you some quotes from him, from his, his recent um, stint on the news. He says here, Here's what the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And that, my friend, is the cure for AIDS. It was right there in the Bible all along. His message is that killing gays is a divinely sanctioned way to rid the world of AIDS. Because if you executed the homos, I'm repeating what he's saying, if you executed the homos like God recommends, you wouldn't have all this AIDS running rampant, Anderson said on his video. Anderson believes that all sodomites should be put to death by the U.S. government to end AIDS. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> yeah, it's called rightly dividing, okay? But we're going to... We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to look at this here. I, I want to do an examination to see if, 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 if you see the same thing that I do here, okay? Um, anyway, he says that, that, is, that he says that that's God's judgment. He says God's judgment is, is death for more than just... But he says that God's judgment is for the sodomite to die if he sins, okay? If he's a sodomite, if he if he's lies with mankind, then the governments of the world are to put them to death. And preachers are supposed to preach that the government of the world is to put them to death. Now he's got other preachers that are like his clones. I mean, they look exactly like him. It's like weird. They're like little android robots. Beep, beep, beep. And, they, and, they, and they, they look and they sound and they talk just like him, like they, like they followed the script. Okay? <clears throat> Mind you, it's some weird MK Ultra stuff or something. But anyway, they follow, they follow the script and, um, and, and they, they're saying, you got to, preachers got to stand up now. We got to stand, we got to stand along. They want us to stand alongside of Stephen Anderson while he pushes for the death of sodomites all over the world. Wow. Okay, I want you to turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 21, verse number 15. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how there are more sins that were called for putting to death than just sodomites. And I just want to see if, if, we're cons if he can be consistent here. And then I want to show you how Paul rebukes him and Jesus Christ rebukes Anderson. Okay? Uh, more, than, more than once here. I, I want to show you this. Okay? Acts chapter 21, verse number 15. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death shall be surely put to death. Exodus 21, 15. Okay, so, I mean, I mean, you ever, you ever had, like, your little kid? You ever had him, like, you know, when you're correcting him or whatever, like, like kind of smack you or something or do something like that? 
Um, it happens, and then you have to deal with it, right? <clears throat> Until they learn that they're supposed to do right. Okay, my, what is my point? My point is that if that's the case, then every kid that ever smacked their parents or even some that ever, then we should take them to the law and we should put them to death. That's what he's saying. So, wait a minute, are you telling me that you believe God wants us to give the authority of the United States government to put our children to death if they did so? I mean, I, I mean, do you understand this government? I mean, do you have any, I mean, do you, do you like, yeah, he does. He, he understands it well. <clears throat> He's saying that on purpose. Exodus 21, verse number 17, and he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Okay, so if we're going by the same law, then what, what happens? Then we got to kill them. If you curse your mom and dad, you got to die. Exodus 31, 14. I mean, if you're going to go along with this, you might as well go all the way, right? Right? We've got to go all the way. So Exodus 31, 14. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Well, God said that was God's recommendation there. Like, I'm using Anderson's words, God's recommendation there. So, all right. Everybody that's not in church there, the government needs to take out and they need to kill. That's God's recommendation, right? So everybody needs to die. Everybody needs to die. Okay, now I want you to go to the exact same chapter that he takes this text from, that he takes his text from to kill all sodomites, okay? Leviticus chapter 20 and verse number 2. Should go there. See if we can be consistent. Then I want to show you what the scriptures say and give you a perfect example of what happened here. We're going to go to the Bible and we're going to look at it and see what, see what it said there. Uh, further in the New Testament, excuse me. Okay, Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 2. Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So, if they don't follow the Lord God of, of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if they don't follow the New Testament here, then according to Anderson's understanding, according to his teaching, then they should be put to death. Right? Shouldn't the government put them to death? If we're going to go by the same rules, we've got to be consistent. We can't pick and choose, right? Now, again, we're not talking about principles, like a man not wearing things that pertain to a woman and things like that. Those are principles that are timeless principles, okay? We're talking about, we're talking about a theocracy here, by the way. Okay, we're talking about a government ran by God. Remember, at this time, God was the head of the government. Do you understand that? Moses, Moses, the man of God, was under God, and God, they had no king. God was their king. Amen. This was under God. And that's how God intended them to be, was under him. He said, you're going to make a king, but if you do, they still have to follow these rules okay, that I lay down. America's not a theocracy. America's under the Antichrist. His portrait is on the dollar bill. <clears throat> I don't mean George Washington, by the way. I mean on the back. <clears throat> but um, anyway, so... His sign and symbol, his banner is right there. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse number 10. Now, this is interesting. I found this to be fascinating right here, these two next verses, because this really proves that either Paul didn't get the memo from Anderson that he was to do this, because Paul said the opposite of what Anderson really says. I mean, he says something different here. Okay, Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 10. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Now, do you remember, do you remember when the woman that was in adultery came to Jesus? What did he say to him? Did he put her to death? No. She was condemned by the law. She knew she deserved to die. Are you saying that the purpose of the law was a schoolmaster to bring men to Christ? So they took the law and they accused her. She bowed her head and was guilty. And where did that law bring her to? Christ. And then what did Christ do? Did he say, kill her? Yep, stone her. No, he used the same law on them and said, well, he that is out sin, cast the first stone. Why? For the Son of Man came not to destroy men's lives, but 
to save him. We're going to get to that. How about an even, an, even, an even better example of the hypocrisy of what this man is trying to preach and how it shows him that he doesn't understand the difference between Israel and now, okay, and local New Testament church. By the way, we don't believe in the church. We believe in the New Testament church, okay? Amen. But anyway, um, but he doesn't understand the difference, okay? And here's why he doesn't understand the difference. He says, I mean, he says that he's a Jew, okay, and he's a citizen of Israel, and uh, and he and he's I don't know which tribe Yahoo Yahoo that one, um, but uh, anyway, but he says he says that he's he's a citizen of Israel, okay, and um, you know some of you have bought into the Catholic lie, the Jesuit lie that you're supposed to like. I mean, you're supposed to look at Israel as they're more satanic than anything in the world, and you actually think that like they hold all the power in the world. Well, you've been fooled, okay. You've been fooled by a group of, of people that Anderson works for called the Jesuits, okay? Amen. And you've been fooled by their handler, Alex Jones, and people like that, who get you to what? Look at the Rothschilds. Yeah, it's the Rothschilds. Yeah, because, you know, I know that the Rothschilds, they're the bankers for the Vatican, and they tell the Pope what to do, right? Come on, people. Who do you think owns all the money? Who do you think owns all the wealth and the land? Is it the Jews? No, it's the Vatican. They're worth trillions. Really? So these billionaires are telling the trillionaire king of the arcane master occult leader, the black pope, and his and his henchmen, the white pope, he's telling that they're telling these Jews are telling them what to do. And no, I'm not a Zionist, okay? I'm not. I'm a Christian. Okay? I'm not a Zionist, no. But I also know who's pulling the strings. Okay? And there ain't no Jew telling the Pope what to do, okay? Rothschild's not sitting there telling the Pope what to do. It's not happening. Because the Pope's the guy that can walk into any country in this world and has complete diplomatic immunity. He cannot be arrested. He cannot be touched. He cannot be violated. A dime can't be taken from him. He can do whatever he wants in any land can't be sued can't be <laughs> and those that try they go away those that try harder they get suicided and decide they're ready to die they go on vacation and never come back okay so Understand that, okay? <clears throat> You've bought into this lie. But anyway, so this is why he's confused, because he believes he's, he's an, a citizen of Israel. Um, yeah, anyway. So it's kind of weird, but he's, he's a weird guy. Um, Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 10, or verse number 11. Look at this. And the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Wait a minute. So they're supposed to die, right? Shall be put to death under what? Under the nation of Israel, under theocracy, when they ruled and reigned. When God was their leader. Okay? Now, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, though. Because this is exactly what happened. You heard the law in Leviticus. Same place, yeah, the same place that he took his Leviticus on, on, on lying with mankind, okay? And by the way, if somebody tries to make this, the foolish accusation that we are trying to soften the sin of sodomy, or that's ridiculous, okay? Let me tell you something. Last week, a week ago, I was walking away, and these sodomites were parading themselves, and there was four of them. And they were parading, they were mocking God, they were laughing, they were hugging on each other and doing all this perverted stuff in front of us. And I looked over at him and I said, you're, you're disgusting and vile to God and you need to repent of that wicked sin and get right with God. You need to repent, you're wicked. I said, you're doing things that a dog knows not to do. So, and I did it right to their face, okay? I didn't, I didn't, and the one man was going to walk over, and he's across the street, he was going to walk over and then he thought better and walked the other way. 
So we're, we, we go right out to their parades and we preach against that sin and preach the gospel to them, preach the law to them, so they'll repent. I don't hide behind a pulpit and say things. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 1 says, It is reported commonly there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Wait a minute. I thought the Levitic Levitical law just said that he was to be put to death. Well, I mean, here's the only problem. Corinth isn't Israel. You understand? Corinth, this was the church at Corinth. This was a local New Testament church, okay? And the nations never regarded God's law. That was given to Israel, those laws were. It was given to a specific people. If you're trying to turn the America, America into Israel, you're a fool. Okay? Those laws were not given to the nations. They were given to Israel. There is a difference. And no, I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist. And no, I don't follow. I just can read a Bible, okay? I can just read the Bible, what it says, and who he's talking to, and who he's giving instructions to, okay? And we don't have a king in America. We have one that wants to be a king in America. Right? But he's not the king. He's not the king of fierce countenance that will come. <laughs> it is reported commonly, though, there's fornication. So what happened here? Well, according to Anderson's interpretation, Paul violated, Paul violated the law because he didn't tell the Corinthians, you put that man to death. But they say to him, you discipline him out of the church. Get him out. If you won't repent, get him out. What did Jesus say to the woman in adultery? Didn't he break the command? She was supposed to be stoned. Why didn't Jesus do that? Right, because the law was a schoolmaster to bring them to Christ. Of course they're condemned and worthy of death. We understand that. That's what we preach, that you are condemned and worthy of death, and you must repent. But we don't advocate going out and having the U.S. government start offing people that are sinners. That's called dominion theology. makes sense, though, when you start to look at some of the personal contacts that Mr. Steven Anderson has and who some of his connections are. <clears throat> the apostle, adultery was a capital offense in the Old Testament. It was punishable by death, but we need to be consistent. Christ instituted divorce for the hardness of their hearts, so not everyone was killed. Do you understand that? That's why he introduced divorce. He said for the hardness of their heart. This woman was caught in the act of, of uh, adultery. And what did he say? He said, go and, he said, John chapter 8, verse number 4 says, They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that, that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? What do you say, Jesus? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. See, now this is where, and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. See, this is where this verse applies, not to street preachers who are preaching the, the law, a schoolmaster to bring men to Christ and condemning men's conscience so they come under the condemnation of the law that every mouth may be stopped and that all the world may become guilty before God. No, this is for those foolish preachers named guys like Stephen Anderson that want to literally have the government take stones and kill sodomites. Man, i got to hurry. Okay. And the, witch, and the witch heard it being convicted by their own conscience. Why were they convicted? Because the law convicted them. You see why that's the goal of the law? That's the duty of the law to convict man. It's a duty. It's what the law does. It convicts.
being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even at the last, and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman and said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. Lord. Master. Sovereign. Ruler. Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Well, that would be contrary to the message that was given by Stephen Anderson. That's contrary to that. Why is that contrary? Because, well, first of all, one of the problems is Anderson believes repentance is just changing your mind. Like, I want pizza. Never mind, I want ice cream. Okay, that's what he thinks repentance is. But then you don't go grab the ice cream. You still go for the pizza because you didn't have a change of action. You just changed your mind, but your actions didn't follow. Yeah, that's really a messed up. I mean, I don't. How can you change your mind and your action not change? It's like, okay, I'm going to put this phone down, but I'm going to pick it back up. Back up, but I don't pick it up. Well, wait a minute. Then, did I, then did I really have a change of mind? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. It does. That doesn't make any sense. That's insanity. Yes, it is. It's absolute insanity. It's absolute insanity. It's what it is. So he does not call sodomites to repentance because he does not understand regeneration. He doesn't believe that they can be changed. He doesn't believe that they can repent. He believes they're all reprobate. So if they're all reprobate, then kill them all. Kill them all. Yeah, just kill everybody. Well, it's the same spirit. But Jesus said that the effeminate and those that are abusers themselves of mankind, such as were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified. But is Stephen going to tell God that he was wrong? Is Anderson going to tell Jesus Christ that he was wrong? That no, or, or and the Apostle Paul that he was wrong? Paul, you don't understand. No, there weren't. There weren't some that were former effeminate and abusers of themselves of mankind. No, they weren't that way. I'm sorry, but no, you're wrong because all sodomites are reprobates and they can't be saved. So that's. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Uh, Paul was wrong. Then he, then he has to believe there's error in Scripture. Then he cannot believe that it's true. I believe in the power of God to save the vilest of sinners. I believe in the blood of Christ to wash away sins and make men new creatures. I believe in the regeneration of the Holy Ghost. But when you don't believe in a gospel that changes people, then you will see the sins of sodomy as too far. So Anderson, is his, his answer is to kill all sodomites. But I say the Lord rebukes you, you fool. Do I speak too straight for some people, you think? Surely it can be a sign of reprobate that someone is a sodomite, but it's not stated in Scripture that all sodomites are reprobates. Again, the focus in Romans chapter 1 is not sodomites, but Gentiles ignoring the natural light that was given to them, all under sin, all under condemnation. Your, con your conscience should be so condemned that you fear you are left to your own sin and abandoned to it and run to the cross for forgiveness. That's what it's about. How many, you know, I've seen testimony after testimony where people told me I thought it was too late for me. I was really fearful. That's what the law does. It puts you in a place. I've read of old Baptist preachers that they, they were on their knees praying to get saved and they before they were saved and they were down on their knees praying and they said, Lord, it's just too late. I've got no conviction. God's going to lead me to my own sin and I'm going to die and go to hell. I've got nothing. And then God brought the light of that in and the light of the gospel into their souls and they saw their evil condition before Him. By the way, tell, tell Manasseh it was too late for him too after he had left and went there and was in all manner of wickedness and witchcraft and sodomy and magic and, and for, that fornicating magic and all that other garbage that he was with it and soothsayers and everything else. But God saved him and changed him and made him new. There are sodomites that are truly stand today in danger of being reprobates. Some are already some already are reprobates that are in danger of that because they have ignored, they have ignored the light of the truth. They're without natural affection or devil possessed in a in a danger of never caring again for their soul. 
But to advocate an already corrupt government to start putting people to death for sins is a dangerous concept and comes from a man that cannot understand Christ changes sinners. Men will perish in hell, and this man wants to see them get there sooner. I want to read something to you in Luke chapter 9, verse number 52. And sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he, but he turned and he rebuked them. And he said, you know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Boy, I'm sure glad that when I was a hell-bound sinner stuck in my sin and fornicating and worthy of death, that some preacher didn't come along, stand up on a pulpit, and encourage the United States government to put me to death for my sins. But they preached the gospel, the grace of God, and called men to repentance. And they believed in the power of a changed life. And they believed that God could save anyone and forgive their sins and cleanse them from their unrighteousness and make them new creatures in Christ. He knows not what manner of spirit. Men will perish in hell. He has taken the Levitical law given to Israel and applied it to U.S. government. We are not a theocracy. This is due to his replacement theology and dominionist ideas that he holds. He, be he believes that the, the, the church replaces Israel. Churches are local, and Israel is a, was a nation, and it will be a nation again one day, and they will be saved by the gospel after two-thirds are destroyed and the others come to faith in Christ. There is a remnant that believes in the end according to election, the Bible says. You know, that is a hard-pressed thought because people that are post-trib today, they want to believe that God is finished and there's nothing going to happen over there. That's all done. It's not all done, okay? When, they see, when you see, therefore shall see the abomination that make it desolate, the Bible says that very clearly, there's going to be an image to the beast that is raised. They are going to worship the image of the beast. Others are going to wake up and say, hey, wait a minute, no. God said... God said not to make any graven images. That's not God. That's not the prophet of God either. That's not the Messiah. Because the Messiah said that he would never to make an image. God said never to make an image. That's not him. They're going to run. The rest are going to be killed. Are they going to get saved because they're Jews? No, they're going to get saved because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just like any other man gets saved. And they are going to be grafted back in. And there's going to be one body. Not two different ones. Not Israel church. One, like Paul said, they will all be one. Brought into one body in the new Jerusalem. Amen. They want to say, no, God's done with that. No, God's not done with that. He said he wasn't done with it. There's going to be a saving remnant there. No, they don't get some special divine thing. No, they don't get some different gospel. No, they're not saved some other way. And no, they're not just privileged because they're, 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 they're Israelites. There's not going to be a privilege in two-thirds being destroyed and murdered in front of their eyes. That's not a privilege I would want. I'm sorry, but I don't want that one. Okay? And no, I'm not a, no, I'm not a, I'm not a Zionist. Neither am I a Jesuit coadjutor either. Or do I hang out with them? Like Alex Jones. The fake, the fraud, and the phony. Preaching a false gospel leading men to hell. Yoked up with the, the likes of David Icke and, and, other, and other cultists, Satanists, Joe Rogan, other Satanists. So then Stephen Anderson just pops on there and they are all in agreement? Are they all together? Are they all one? How could I go on an Alex Jones show and not reprove that wicked heathen of his wicked New Age gospel? Answer? 
because you're a plant, that's why. And you sprinkle in truth with a lot of error to deceive the hearts of the simple. Again, Anderson hates the doctrine of hyper-Calvinism, but he seems to hold the perverse view that all sodomites are elected to hell by being reprobates. If you take it to its logical conclusion, you have to take it to that. That's what it is. Then these are just sinners in his conclusion that cannot be saved, so just kill them. He believes the law states this, but it's inconsistent with Scripture. So what's the answer? What do we do? What's the answer for this? You do what God commanded you to do. You go into all the world and you preach the gospel to every creature. You preach the law, a schoolmaster, to bring men to Christ. That's what you do. Sodomites can be saved. Do I know all who are reprobate? No, I don't, and I'm not commanded to know that. I'm commanded to go preach the word, to be instant in season, out of season, to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering of doctrine. I'm to preach the law that every mouth may be stopped and that all the world may become guilty before God. There was a video the other day on of a, of a, of a lady that was a former lesbian that got saved. She, has a, she said she came in repentance and faith and was born again, and her life has never been the same again. She's never went back. She's married now, has children, and her life is new in Christ. But I've heard those Andersonites say, no, we've got to kill all of them. They can't be saved. No, they can't be saved. They're, it's too late for them. Oh, okay, so you know, so, so let me get this straight. Okay, so drunkards that are listed in that, so fornicators are listed in that same list of reprobates, so to speak, or could be reprobates. Um, so those that are, those that sit in Baptist churches that say a one, two, three, repeat after me, and never have a change, their life never changes. The Holy Ghost never sweeps in and makes them new creatures. None of those people, but just sodomites. They're the ones. They're they're the ones. It's totally inconsistent. It's ridiculous. And it's from the pit of hell. The answer is to preach and to stand against the sodomite agenda. The answer is to preach the word. But see, when you... See, let me tell you something. Whether it was John Calvin, whether it was Zwingli, whether it was any of them, when they did not believe in the power of God to do a mighty work, they would take the sword of government out to destroy and to, and to fulfill their will. Okay, they did it to the Anabaptists, they did it to many of them, they destroyed, they murdered them, they butchered them. Why? Because what they didn't believe the gospel could do, they believed the sword of government was to do. And Luther did the same thing. He said, I think you should, you princes, take the sword against those Anabaptists and destroy them. Why? Well, when you don't believe in the power of God to do things, and you don't follow good gospel order, and you don't believe that God can save the down and out, the, her- the, the, the lost sinner on their way to hell, the adulterer, the fornicator, or anybody else who is trapped and dead in trespasses and sins. By the way, did you know there's only one category? It's called dead in trespasses and sins. Did you know that, that covers everybody? Did you know that covers any sinner dead in trespasses and sins? And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's all sinners. Now you can spend your life trying to figure out which ones are reprobate, or you can go preach the word to all of them and see sodomites get born, and repent of their sins, and trust the, the Lord Jesus Christ and be born again by the Spirit of God and have a new life in Christ. Or you can take the Antichrist way, that if you don't follow this, we'll chop your head off. You can take the Dominionist way, that I'll take the sword out. What the church can't accomplish, the sword will accomplish. Because that's what you're saying. It is a damnable, wicked heresy. And Stephen Anderson, you've been marked and avoided. Father, thank you, Lord, for your words and the truth of them.
Lord, I pray they go out everywhere. I pray everybody that could possibly hear this, see this, would see it. Lord, I pray you'd magnify it. I pray you'd send it all the way to the White House if necessary, Lord, wherever it can go, in every place, in the deepest, darkest parts of this earth, in the brightest places of this world, Lord, that it would go everywhere that men would hear that. That men would know that the grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ can cover their sins and forgive them of their iniquities and that God can come in, that Christ can change them and make them new creatures and they'll never be the same again. Dear God, help us to preach a gospel that changes and saves peoples and makes men different, Lord. Help us never to believe that we need the sword of government to accomplish what the gospel could not. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.